Speaking on the topic of objective and subjective, there's one other issue that I have with reviews that isn't immediately obvious up until this point. You see, I'm not of the opinion that everyone in the world can have the same exact opinion on a particular thing, no matter how beloved or hated it might be. For example, when I first played the game Bubsy is 3D in Forbidden Planet, also simply known as Bubsy 3D, it was actually out of curiosity to see firsthand what the big ruckus was over an old game being deemed bad. And not just bad either, but one of the worst games of all time bad. I knew that the only way to truly experience it was for me to play the game myself. So I found a second-hand copy on eBay, inserted it into my backwards compatible PlayStation 3, and didn't find myself hating it. I mean, sure, the game has its flaws here and there, I'm not going to deny that, but... well... I was still a bit puzzled as to why a game from the 90s was being torn to pieces in the 2010s. The 2010s being the point when it started to get the hate in the first place. I could go on and on about all of the different smaller things that annoy me about Bubsy 3D. In almost every level there's a new mechanic added that's just plain bad. But to go into that much detail, the video would need to be over an hour long. For me, the point that I ended up really liking the game stems from the level Runaway Wooly, due to liking the song that plays in the background. In fact, the one you're hearing now. The one that gives the vibe of a ghost train at night with intense urgency. Though despite the song elevating the game for me, that clearly wasn't the case for many others. If you were to look at the various Bubsy 3D reviews out there, they all boil down to a few things. Simple graphics are ugly. Controls are bad. Bubsy's voice is annoying. Despite side notes, many people forgetting that there's an off button for his voice. And the game being often difficult and hard to, to navigate. And probably hating the music depending on who you ask. So, what's the issue, you may be asking? Well, the issue here is that after a while, the reviews start to become predictable. For despite there being different people in the videos, it is more or less the same exact thing. It makes me wonder why some even talk about this game, even if they know that they are just saying the same thing over and over. I guess because people just like that sort of thing, especially from the more notable YouTubers. Though for me, the real problem here is not just everyone having the same opinion, but rather... A lack of discussion. Because you see, while it is easy to get your opinion out of there, in any kind of review, that doesn't make it a discussion. A review is a one-way stream of uninterrupted information, meaning that they are not made for talking with others to see what they think. More or less telling you to sit there while the author talks to you about a product. And this is just a theory, but I feel that one of the reasons why some people may have a strong reaction to a review, especially ones that are hot takes, is because the reviewers themselves often don't include the viewpoints of others. Granted, a reviewer doesn't have to reference another opinion out there, any other opinion out there. However, what I feel reviewers can do here is make said review, then get some comments in the comment section on YouTube, and then make a follow-up video on what the reviewer agrees and disagrees with. Maybe even change the reviewer's opinion a bit? I don't know. In any case, I feel that this is an idea that can work if handled correctly. Though I can see two potential downsides with this idea. 
One is that some yahoos out there still won't be civil, because the internet can still be unpredictable. And two is that it can take precious time away from content creators making reviews of other products and the like. Still, I feel that this suggestion might help one gain a greater sense of community, as well as the potential for more friends.